This presentation has been prompted by seeing other YouTube videos that portray the function of the anode angle incorrectly. This is not to say that some videos don't portray this aspect of tube design correctly, but to point out the error so you will know the correct reason behind the anode angle. If you are not familiar with the line focus principle or Bremsstrahlung phenomena, you might find it handy to review these topics from my previous presentations listing before continuing this lesson. Before we begin, let's review pertinent tube anatomy. First, we have the anode. For this presentation, the type of anode is the rotating disc type. The reason I am depicting the rotating anode is because it is the one you will most likely encounter in a conventional x-ray clinic. Next, we have the focal spot. The focal spot is where the electron stream is focused and is the area responsible for the emanation of x-rays the tube produces. For many of the illustrations in this presentation, I will depict the lower one-third of the anode disc in profile. The red circle indicates this portion of the anode disc. Surrounding the tube is a lead housing. In actuality, it consists of aluminum shell that has an interfacing of lead. For the sake of simplicity, I will refer to this structure as the lead housing. Finally, we have the tube port. It consists of radiolucent material, mostly plastic, that allows the primary radiation to exit the tube. The purpose of this slide is to provide a clear idea of what the focal spot looks like and to summarize its importance. The radiation used in any exam emanates from the focal spot. This diagram illustrates the primary radiation arising from the focal spot. It ignores other non-primary radiation being produced. On the end view of the anode, you can see a small rectangle at the bottom of the anode face. From this perspective, we see the focal spot's actual size. Its size is governed by the length of the filament and the geometry of the focusing cup that directs the electron stream from the filament to the anode. It is preferable to have a small focal spot because small focal spots produce finer detail on a finished radiograph. Generally, the price paid for a small focal spot is heat is being concentrated in a smaller area, increasing the chance of pitting or melting of the anode and limiting the MA one can use for technique selection. This image depicts the lower one-third of the anode disc. The angle of the anode's face can range from 6 degrees to a maximum of 20 degrees. The statement below is the reason for the existence of this lesson. I'll give you a few seconds to read it. With that being said, it is wrong. Both the energy and direction of the X-ray beam is completely random. The peak energy of the X-ray beam is controlled by the KVP selected by the radiographer. Most of the radiation exiting the tube is produced by Bremsstrahlung interactions, which in a nutshell is an interaction of a high-speed electron with the nuclear field of a tungsten atom, and the degree of interaction is a random event. The direction the X-ray takes when the kinetic energy of the electron is converted to an X-ray is also completely random. The one takeaway from this slide is that X-ray photon energy is random, and the direction of the resulting X-ray photon also takes is completely random. Here is an X-ray tube about to produce X-rays. Radiation initially fills the tube and is contained by the lead housing. A small portion is allowed to exit the tube, 
via the port. The radiation contained by the lead housing is called stem radiation or off-focus radiation. And the radiation exiting the tube is a primary or useful beam. X-rays cannot be focused, refracted, or reflected, or redirected in any predictable manner. X-rays can be confined by the lead housing and allowed to escape confinement via the tube port. Furthermore, the radiation field is shaped by the collimator. The correct answer to what is the purpose of the anode angle it is to control the effective focal spot. I suppose you may be wondering what is the effective focal spot. Probably the most effective demonstration is to compare the effective focal spot formation by comparing two anodes with different anode angles. First we draw two lines perpendicular to the anode face arising from the top and bottom of the focal spot. Next we draw two vertical lines from the point where the first lines intersect the angled face of the anode. The first pair of lines is defined as the actual focal spot size and the second pair is the effective focal spot size. The effective focal spot is what is onto the image receptor. If an anode angle is 20 degrees, a 3 mm actual focal spot will project a 1.04 mm focal spot onto the image receptor at the center of the field. Decreasing the anode angle by 10 degrees, a 3 mm actual focal spot will project a 0.52 mm focal spot onto the image receptor. Pros and cons of the smaller angle are a smaller angle projects a smaller effective focal spot onto the image receptor, yielding higher detail on the final image, while maintaining the same anode heat stress as an actual focal spot with a larger angle. One of the drawbacks is that the steeper angle will produce more pronounced anode heel of shadow on the larger exposure fields. Not clear about the anode heel effect? Here is a quick summary. The bottom portion of the anode disc is called the heel. Note that some of the radiation exiting the tube has to pass through the heel of the anode, especially on long length exposures like an AP abdomen or a femur exam. Furthermore, note that the intensity of the radiation that passes through the heel is reduced. Finally, note the anode heel effect is more pronounced on the 10 degree anode. The conclusion being that the smaller the anode angle, the greater the anode heel effect, and the shorter the length of the most intense portion of the X-ray field. Just a side note, the anode heel effect can be used to a radiographer's advantage, but that is a discussion for another day. To summarize, the purpose of the anode angle is to control the size of the effective focal spot, not direct X-rays out of the tube. The steeper the anode angle, the smaller the effective focal spot, and the higher the detail projected onto the image receptor. Anodes with small angles allow for a larger actual focal spot while keeping the effective focal spot small which spreads the heat stress over a larger area of the anode and allows for more anode heat capacity, which makes for larger MA stations, allowing more flexibility in technique selection. Smaller anode angle does increase the likelihood the anode heel effect may be a problem, which can limit the radiation field length or make the tube appropriate for smaller body parts. This will end my presentation. Thank you.